Hi, I'm Chef Mark Conjac. I'm one of those chefs at the Auckland Seafood School. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare a whole gurnard and we're going to bake it in the oven. Okay, the first thing you need to do is make sure your fish is nice and healthy, nice clear eyes, etc. It's still got its stomach in it. So what we need to do is trim down through the belly. We don't want to punch the knife in too far because we want to keep the guts fairly whole. Um, so what you need to do is that little piece there, just run your knife up towards the base of the skull and you've got like a little plate here where the head sits. Run it around each side, gives you room to move, the ability to get in there. This is basically where the tail starts, so the stomach sits into that cavity here. What you do need to do now is remove the stomach as much as possible with one hit. I've just put the knife in there and it's just basically removed where the gland sits and where the fish disposes of its waste and I'm using my hand just to get in there and lift, lift the stomach away. It's quite important that you try to keep everything as whole as possible because you don't want um, the stomach puncturing. When you get to a stage like this, you need to just tuck your knife in and trim around accordingly. And this is a really fresh fish, which is really great, uh, which means that uh, there is no smell. Uh, it's really fresh. And just trimming accordingly. We've kept the stomach whole. We'll find there'll be a bit of sand in there. So by keeping it whole, you're not actually hurting the fish at all and you're not getting any bitterness and discoloration. And as you can see, the fish is fairly clean on the inside. We'll give it a quick rinse out with some cold water. And that's basically all we need to do for the cleaning and preparation. If you do punch the stomach, then you need to clean it out really well because it can be quite bitter and it can actually ruin the sweetness and flavor of the fish itself. You can run the, the water down through the gills and that will help flush it out at the same time. But pretty much, that's it, lovely and clean. Now that we've cleaned our fish, we've patted it dry, we've kept, made it nice and clean, we've made sure that there's no extra scales on it or anything else like that, nothing needs trimming back, which is fine. What I'm going to do is, because it, it looks really attractive when it's cooked, when it's got its fins on it and, and that sort of thing, so we want to sort of keep it, its integrity to a point. What I do want to do though, is just start scoring the flesh a little bit and that will start allowing some different flavours to come in. So all I'm doing is just nicking the flesh at the top, at the side, okay, and that's going to help us to introduce some salt, some different flavours. Where we trimmed it and below, we've opened up that cavity, which is great. Because what that does, it allows a natural point where the fish can sit. We're going to get a lime, you can use a lemon as well, and we're going to use that to help pack the cavity, but also to help the fish stand nicely when we put it into our pan. What we do want to do is put a little bit of oil in the bottom, and that's to of our pan, and that's just to help us fish later on. We put our fish into our pan. It's a good sized pan for it. We've bent around. If you get a, a, a salmon or a longer piece of fish, a uh, longer whole fish should I say, the best way to do it then is to break the backbone. So you need to just cut through the backbone and you can bend it accordingly and fold it round. It's all about presentation. We want a little bit of butter in there and the butter is going to give it a little bit of flavour and add a little bit of consistency to it as well. So flavour comes about from a little bit of colour, it will come about from the salt and the butter at the same time. And that's enough, that's all that we need. What I do want to do is probably put a little bit of oil just on top, and just to help give it a bit of a shine, just rub that in. It's just going to help protect the fish. It's also going to help add a little bit of colour at the same time. We're going to add some salt. We add a flaky 
um, sea salt. Not going to add too much because we can always season it a little bit later on, but that's certainly enough for the time being. I like using a cracked black pepper. It adds depth, colour, consistency, and flavour. Also, it's not so much an Asian flavour I'm after, but I'm going to add some Chinese rice wine, just a little bit. It's going to help steam, produce some flavours as well. We've got a little bit of mirin. It's just to add a little bit of hint of flavour, because we've got lime in there at the moment. So the wonderful thing that works with lime is nice sweet sort of flavours. So a bit of wine in there, a bit of mirin, it's certainly going to help. Adding a little bit of Chardonnay to it as well. And what we can do at the very end is once it's cooked out, that liquid can be used to make a dressing or a sauce accordingly. I'm going to put in some lime. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lime over our fish and into our water. And this will all be a base of a, a stock of our flavour base as well. And that's it. Our oven's on 200 degrees Celsius. You can put it a little bit lower and you bake it for a slower uh, time, but we don't want to shock the fish. We want to bring the temperature up um, slowly around the fish. When we cook it in a pan like this, the temperature needs to come inside. Our whole fish is ready. Isn't it great? It's been in here about 10 to 12 minutes. We put in the white wine, a little bit of mirror, put some lemon, in, uh, some lime in there, should I say. It's got this wonderful aroma coming through, so it's nicely cooked. And as you can see, the skin's just started to fall off it. Uh, I like serving it in the dish itself. There's a lot of flavour in there at the same time. And as you can see, this liquid has a wonderful flavour of the fish itself. It's just great. To present it and serve it, what you can do is use a knife and a fork and what will happen is the fish will just, fillet will just come off the bone. So all we're doing is rubbing it down one side of the bone itself. You can cut that and, and as you can see, and there's no bones, the bones are left behind as you can see. Rib cage is left behind here, and all you're doing is pulling the beautiful fillet off. Okay, put a little bit of liquid on there, serve it in your plate, absolutely brilliant. Thanks for watching the Auckland Seafood School video. I hope it's been of relevance and of value to you. For more information, visit the